Lab and in Technicolor, I need somebody who is out there to tell me, is the volume right? Can you hear everything? Can you see everything? Is the picture good? Shannon is adjusting the camera. She is. This is tricky So it is. Business. What? what? Uh-oh. Here we go. So I think that uh, everybody's, we got people saying everybody can hear all right, Shannon? I don't want to uh, leave nobody out. If somebody thinks the volume's right, give us a thumbs up or tell Shan she's on the computer over. But first of all, I just want to tell you so much for joining us on the Lord's Day. It is a great day above the grass it is. And what are we talking about? Man, we is fixing to cook us a recipe right out of the brand new cookbook. So speaking of new cookbook, did y'all know the book tour starts when, Shan? April 30th, right? Is in Chicago. Yes, we're going to be at Chicago there at, a, at the Yeti store, and then we're going to leave from there, and we're going to be at Layman's there in Kidron, Ohio, at the largest Amish hardware store I've ever seen in my life. Them folks got everything from washing machines to horse collars. It's my kind of store. It is. So be sure and leave us a comment. Let us know, hey, I'm going to see you in Chicago. Hey, I might see you in Ohio. I might see you at all them stops because we'd sure be glad that you did. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, give us a little t uh, heads up of where the tour is. All right. Chicago's the first one at the Yeti store, and then it's Kidron, Ohio. They're at Layman's. And then the next one is Denver. That is right. Denver, El Segundo. El Segundo, California. Austin. Dallas. Houston, Dallas. And then Charleston. South Carolina. And then we will go through Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So there is a lot of opportunities for y'all to see us. And folks, we never take that for granted. We don't Ooh, because Thomas is going to see us in Chicago. We would love to see you there. We appreciate y'all watching our videos because y'all are what it's all about. And uh, Oh, Kathy had a good point. Everybody hit that like button. Yes, everybody hit that like button. And be sure and share these videos too with everybody else that you got. If you got another social media platform, show them there. It just helps our channel grow. It is. And we're pretty close to two and a half million subscribers. And that is due to Shan and to y'all. So we appreciate you one and all. But what are we talking about today? Cackleberry bites. You, what? You haven't heard of cackleberries? Well, if y'all have watched our videos long enough, you know that one of, where are they at? Oh, one of these things right here. These, what everybody knows as egg is really what? A cackleberry or a hen fruit. Yes. So if you see the camera just shake there just a little, there is a fat beagle that just went by and bumped it. So don't think nothing about it. So, you know, me and Shane got to talk another day. You can have breakfast any time of the day. I like it for breakfast. I like it for lunch. I like it for supper. But folks, these things is so easy and you can make a bunch of them in advance. So if you have to get up early in the morning, you can put them in that nuclear machine right here, that microwave for about 30 seconds the next morning and you've got breakfast to go. So, hey, any more announcements, Shen, before well, we get in this? Well, a lot of people are going to see us in Chicago, but they're confused of like where and when. So just tell them to head All to right. the uh, page. Just go to the events page on the website and you can see it there. But we're going to be at the Yeti store in Chicago. I'm not sure the time right offhand, but it is listed right there on the website when you look under events which all of them are all the stops that we're going to make and we look so forward to seeing each and every one of you there we do so first thing you need to do is uh go to chicken house and get you some eggs if you ain't got none okay because we're going to need some of them and this recipe will call for uh 12 eggs but 10 eggs but if they're like these eggs like i gather from the chickens out here y'all know gladys and the girls some of them is smaller, some of them is bigger. So when it calls for 10, I use 12. But I need you right now to go ahead and preheat that oven to 350 degrees. And I'm going to tell you something that's going to save your life today. That is one of these deals that is what? A silicone cupcake pan is what I call it. But things, these things, oh, it's so easy to cook in and things won't stick in them near as bad. But you can use a regular muffin pan. Just make sure you grease that thing really well so you want to make sure that these things will come out. But uh, I think first thing we should do is what? Get some thick cut hog meat. That's what I'm talking about. Get your cast iron skillet on. Preheat your ovens. Pre oh, we done told them about preheating oh, the oven to 350 degrees. So I've got me some bacon cut up here already, I do. And it's thick sliced bacon. I like that the best. Don't be getting that stuff you can read the newspaper for through it. 
And I usually cut my bacon in half to fry it in this cast iron skillet. And we're using the Marquette today. Y'all seen our review on it. I really like it. It is a great piece of iron. Seasons well, cleans well, accepts seasoning. So it is in good shape. Mage, did the fire come on? It did. So we got, we got, huh? You got Major helping? Major's down here in the bottom. He ain't doing too much, but he's going to make sure if something drops, he is there. Now, go ahead and let's get you a half a block of cream cheese, which is what? Let me see. Four ounces. And put it in the microwave. You can cover it with a coffee filter or a paper towel, but I need you just to warm it up. I don't want you to melt it. I just want you to warm it up good. And we have done done that, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to wait 30 seconds for y'all to go ahead, run over to the microwave, and get that done. And while y'all are doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and get mine out here. I have softened four ounces of cream cheese I have just drop it in there and you know when we had our coffee shop these was the number one item that we served for breakfast it was and you know people just got to come in all the time and you know what they'd put on them after they got them they'd say do you have any of that chutney that you have I said oh yeah we do so we'd mix that put that on the top of them cackle berries and ooh, it was so good how many of y'all have seen me drag this out so many times? Dukes, Mayo. I thank the folks in South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, and everybody down there in the southeast corner for turning me on to this because I do think it is the best. Now, it calls for about two tablespoons. We ain't going to measure. Y'all know me better than that. That's about Someone enough. Someone asked, could you substitute sour cream for the mayonnaise? I guess you could substitute sour cream. Uh... It's not going to affect the taste that much, I don't figure. But if you don't have any mayonnaise, you can sure use some sour and cream, I think. Do? Mayonnaise and the cream, the cream cheese is going to give you another element of cheesy goodness. But the mayonnaise, if y'all have watched our easy scrambled egg video, you know that they're going to make them eggs light and they're going to make them fluffy. Sometimes you have to put your hand over them, keep them, get them out of the pot. So let me get this over here on the automatic, what you call it. This is really nice. I ain't got one of these at the wagon. If I can figure out how to work it, here we go. And we just want to blend that together well. Now, if that's making more noise than y'all think y'all can hear, I'll wait till it quits because it don't take it long. But you want to make sure that that cream cheese is soft. That way it'll blend with that mayonnaise really well. And if there is a few little chunks in there, it ain't going to make no difference because that's going to give them eggs just a little more solidifying when they set up. It will. We've got a lot of Duke Mayo fans. Duke Mayo fans. Folks, I have some in the oven. And y'all remind me, somebody holler at Shan or holler at me because they just like about five minutes. And let me check the bacon here just a minute. So it is doing its thing. Now, y'all all the time be getting on to me because I always put jalapenos in a recipe. Look here. This is the only green thing that is in there. It is not jalapeno. It is green onion. Take it, about three or four of them, just chop them up pretty fine, and then go ahead and dice you up one of them half of a red bell pepper. Now, if you ain't got a red bell pepper, you can use a green one. I don't care. You can use a yellow one. But I got one of them... Slap chop o Maddox, and man, that thing does such a great job. It does. So let's bring this back over here. It has all got mixed together well. Any more questions, Shan, while we're in the middle of this cracking eggs here, fresh from the chicken pen? Um, just uh, mention our events page again. All right, if y'all are just joining us, be sure and check our events page on our website because it's got the upcoming book tour on it, we're and it's going to show you. Having a what? A we're, debate? We're having a debate. Between Duke, Duke's mayonnaise and blue plate, if no, I was guessing. Not. No, Miracle Whip. Oh, Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip considered mayonnaise. Well, when I was... I no, it's salad dressing. When I was growing up, that's all we had. Is Miracle Whip? Is Miracle Whip. That or Hellman's, and that was about it, and we thought it was better than anything because we eat a lot of them dry sandwiches when I was growing up, so uh, if you got some of it, whatever is your favorite, hey, I'm all for it. Uh, I think that Duke's has a really good taste. There's really a chicken feather on this and Mage, it's fresh. So we know it's good. We got to get over here and check this here bacon because I got the feeling. Who wants to know what number Levi's you're wearing? What, 501's. 501's. 
that is what they are. They want the weight and the size and everything? No, I, the Okay, 501s is what I usually wear most of the time are, are Wranglers, but let me get this bacon turned over and that way I can go back to what I was doing. Turn that skillet down just a little. All right, we got 12 eggs in there. Uh-oh, we just got nine. <laughs> Somebody might have been counting, I wasn't. So get them all in there. Put them back in the handy dandy mixing operator you can. Let me check these. Nobody even gave me a heads up, did they, that it's time Don't to check these. Attention. Let me see what's going on here. I'm thinking that, folks, you're going to see the finished product. If I can find another one of them. Don't show us yet. Don't show us yet. Well, I need to get them out. Oh. I'm going to put them over sneaky. here where, where they can't see them. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, no, actually, let me see them because. Oh, now you want to see them. Well, just because when they cook up, they can tell when they're going to be done. All right. Show me. We're going to set them right there. Show me how, see how they pop up. See how them things puff up right there? Folks, oh, that's getting hot. I ain't going to hold it long, but look at that color. Them red bell peppers, things is in there, some bacon, some green onion. Now, if you was like me and you was just eating these for yourself, I'd go ahead and put me some jalapenos in there. I would. Best to set these on a wire rack while they're cooling. I'm going to set them right over here out of the way. The bacon is doing real good. We're going to go scoot that back so it don't fall off the cabinet. I'm going to turn it on warp speed. Tip top, girl says you're doing great. I'm trying to do great. This is out of my element, cooking in the house. Come here, Mage. Uh-oh. Folks are calling, dogs is running, the mage is the kitchen help, the duke is here, Sadie's here. I don't know where the beak is at, so we are trying to get this done, we are. Just let that beat. I'm going to wait till it gets plumbed through. I'm going to give you a tip after you done whipped it for a little bit. Go ahead and pop this thing up there. Reach down in the bottom with that rubber spatula and just give it a raking around there for a minute. Because you can see there might be some of that cream cheese that's hanging on there. I just want to make sure that it all gets incorporated well. Everybody wants to wash your hands now because you touched major. But you're not touching food. Not yet I ain't. But I am fixing to take the bacon out. I think Caden's calling you, right? Ma'am? Caden calling? Caden was calling. My grandson? He's, he's wanting to... Me. He won't know how to figure out the hot tub. Maybe take it and then pull it back. Let me just, folks, this is my grandson. He could be in a bind, so just hang on here just a minute. <laughs> now it's on voicemail, so he must not want to. But he calls back. I'm going to go ahead and answer it. Y'all can talk to him, too. He is a good feller, he is. Uh, we need to get that bacon out. I hope everybody has caught oh, up. this is a good question. Off topic. But have you ha ever had anything other than a dog come through the doggy door? Who? Oh, not while we've been here. Uh, you know, there could have been some other things come through here while we was gone, but I'm pretty sure that the Duke, Sadie, and Big would have maybe chewed we've it got, up. Well, we got a fenced yard, so that helps. Yeah, and there was these two pieces of bacon didn't make it for some unknown reason, but I'm going to put them over here. I'll fry them up for the mage. Now, I will give you a tip after you chop them bell peppers up with that slot. Slap a matic, get you a paper towel because folks, they're going to have quite a bit of moisture into them and just give them a little squeeze. That tip is not in the book. And if y'all got the book, go ahead and let me see. Turn to page 20 right here. Y'all, oh, it ain't come out yet, but it's <laughs> going to come out. Be sure you check that events page so you'll know where we're going to be. So go ahead, got that tune back up there. There's them onions. We're going to go ahead, set them right over here to the side because we're fixing to get into the assembly mode we are. Any more questions, Shan? Somebody wants to know you use silicone muffin pans. Do you like them? Yes. And when I'm cooking something like these or even when we were doing a lot of blueberry muffins, it uh, seems like they just separate a whole lot easier. They're easier to clean. Uh, but go ahead and grease them too. If you got some WD-40 pins oil, just make sure you don't put it in here. Use something else. So get them greased well. Oh, we've got somebody tuning in from Ireland. Oh, that's good. How I'm often so does Shannon cook? 
How often does Shan cook? <laughs> Shan cooks. She is a great baker. Oh, uh, somebody asked, is your wedding cake topper on the top shelf? It is for a fact. Yeah, that was, well, it was ours, but that was my grandmother's. Yes, on it my dad's was. Side. So we display it with honor and pride. We do. So I was really confused as what was fitting to happen next, but it was about chopping up some bacon. It was. Do you have a recommendation for people allergic to eggs? I have no idea. Whew. You know, when we're on a ranch, the only thing that takes the place of eggs when you're trying to make a cake or something like that is mayonnaise, but they make some, uh, maybe some artificial part of eggs that might do you some good, but I really don't know for sure. I don't. But go ahead and just dice this bacon up because, and you can use sausage. Uh, you can use a combination. Uh, I've put chorizo in there before, so whatever you want to make it with. And a lot of people be saying, well, I bet y'all never cooked this for cowboys. I, I want to tell you right now, everything that we have has been tested by cowboys, dogs, the neighbors, the vet clinic, the post office, and everything else. So we make sure that it is of quality before we turn have it you, out. Have you ever watched Next Level Chef? Next Level Chef. I have seen that. Ain't that with Gordon? I'm not sure which one that is. Somebody asked if you would do it, if you were asked. Well... It depends on what time of day it was and what year it was because we're pretty busy right now. So we got all these eggs whipped up. Now, accordingly, 10 to 12 eggs is going to maybe fill all this 12 muffin pan. And you want to go about three quarters full is what I like to do. So just pour them there. Or you can put this in a pitcher if you want to. But why dirty up another pot if you don't have to? Who is actually cooking this recipe right along with us. That's what I'd like to know because I love for people to get in the kitchen, share it with the kids, get everybody you can in there. So... Oh, somebody asked about how your health is doing. Well, it is doing really well. I hurt my back doing something. Don't know really what it was, but uh, we've had an MRI. It didn't show a whole lot, uh, but we're going to go to some physical therapy. But I tell you folks, I'm still doing yoga. So... It don't matter what order you do this. I just need you to put some in everybody. Don't leave nobody out. There is the big walking by shaking the camera shaking again. The camera. Big. You're shaking things up, buddy. You're a good hound, though. There might be a bite of bacon. It might be. Somebody's truck metal is cooking, but they're falling behind a little bit. Well, there's all, I mean, we got all the time in the world here. I just want you to get it done and want you to enjoy it. Next, wherever you want to start, let's do some bacon. What brand Mexican vanilla do you recommend? We've had a lot of questions on that. It's in the cabinet in just a minute. I will get it out and tell you the name because I can't pronounce it, but I will spell it to you. So everybody's got bacon except the big and the mage. And the Mexican vanilla that we use is X-O-C-H-I-T-L. Right there, come from a good been good friend Billy Blair when he was visiting down there, he got that for us. Don't forget the green onion. A lot of times, me and Shan, when we have breakfast, we put green eggs, green onions in our eggs, nearly every morning. So, and St. Patty's Day is coming up. You can get you some green in there. Have you, you can. ever tried these with gravy? No, uh, I have not, but I'm sure it would be good because what does gravy not go with? I mean, you can put gravy on everything you got. Uh, I think it would be a winner all the way around. Get Billy in there. Blair says you're welcome. Thank you, Billy Blair. I hope things is well up there at Lake of the Ozarks. I do. So, next after that is in what? In your opinion, what is the best mixer that won't break down? Oh. I would probably say my Dewalt mixer that I got, stick that uh, beater in the drill, and I ain't never had it go bad yet. As long as you can keep that battery charged, it'll last forever, especially out there in the middle of nowhere. And um, because I have used that whisk a lot till I'm really thinking at times I might have rotator cuff problems, but be sure you get plenty of cheese on there. We got any Wisconsin folks out there today because, whew, I know they'd be liking some cheese, just like me and a big and everybody else. Timothy says, Kent, your head is naked. Where's your hat? Well, my mother told me try not to wear a hat in the house. It shows bad manners. 
So one thing, folks, that I forgot, so we're just going to do oh. it right here. Elliot says he's falling behind. Don't worry, Elliot. It's all right, Elliot. It's all right, my friend. You can eat these any time of the day, no matter how long it takes to get them fixed. They are plenty good eating. Now, there's two or three different ways I like to do this right here. I've used our original oh, yeah. seasoning on there many times. Got a lot of Wisconsin. Well, good. We got the cheese out. We do. If I can find what I am looking for. I like to mix mine just a little so everything is really combined when it gets in there because really you're supposed to season them eggs while you got them over in that fancy mixing machine. But you do it this way, stir them up, everything is going to be good. You got the oven preheated to what? 350 when, degrees. When you're doing some of your videos on your larger recipes, who gets the leftovers? On the larger recipe, who gets the leftovers? I would say my oldest son and the grandkids probably uh, get more of them than anybody. But uh, we try to share with people. You don't have to put this on a rack. Sometimes I do because I can reach in there with one hand that way and pull it out. But like I say, when these get done, uh, and I haven't done it, but you need to let them cool on a wire rack. And when they puff up like that, folks, I'm just going to tell you, it's just like a biscuit that doesn't rise all the way because they're all the time, most of the time, going to fall down. Me and Shan have had a discrepancy here that maybe overbeating the egg does that. I have added a little baking powder to them at every once in a while, but uh, they still eat just fine. In the oven it goes, 350 degrees, takes them 30 minutes to cook. So we're in pretty good shape we are. I'm just uh, going to go ahead. asked, what do you make especially for me? Who? Wait, show me all of them because I want to see how they draw. What do I make especially for Shan? You can see how much things fail down here, folks. But I'm just telling you. Which they're supposed to. They will do that. But we're just going to go ahead and cut one right here and let you look in here. There is some bacon, some cheese, Ooh, some egg. The steam. the steam is coming right off of it. Now, if I was really going to eat this, I would just go ahead and get me some of that chutney that we got and we pour. Uh huh. I. I broke a jar under the seat of the pickup today, so I know there's some crumbs out there, but let me see, do I have one in here? You know, the, the plumber that don't have time to fix his leak is the same guy that don't have time to have none of his product. So let me see what this is. That's what we got right here. It is for a fact, but I am gonna get me this little knife right here Put it right on this. Oh, I have some really sad schnauzer eyes looking at me because they usually get another bite by this time. If y'all have never tried this, it used to be called our green chili chipotle relish. It is still the same thing. We just changed the names. And folks, it is called what? Kent Rollins Cowboy Chutney. Whew, I've been wanting me one of these. We ain't had one of these in a long time, Shen. Mmm. So good it is. I'm gonna pass it over here to Shan. I mm. eat these any time of day. They are so good. And folks, that chutney goes on everything it does. Can you FedEx these, these samples? Yeah, I'll put them Pony Express. Uh, oh. Good Lord willing, they might get there sometime next week. Is there a Cackleberry dance? Cackleberry dance, yes yeah. there is. Bad back and all. You first, you gotta start out up here. Put your, put your thumbs as tall up in your rib cage as you can. Bend your knees just a little. Now bring your knees together, and when you flap your wings, pull your knees out. And you do it like this, and you do Mage, there's this chicken in Okay, the house. sorry, we didn't get back to Kate's question about what you make me. I guess breakfast every morning is very good. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm going to tell you all this, and you probably know it. Uh, I have the easy part of this job. I do. I stand over here. Shan has the hard part. Uh, she has to edit every video. And uh, she is the love of my life, my inspiration. Um, so I've been cooking her breakfast for as long as I've been together with her. And uh, my dad used to cook it for my mother all the time. And uh, we get up every morning, cook breakfast, sit over at that table with a bunch of begging dogs. We bless it. 
I give her a kiss, tell her I love her, and things is don't get no better than that. It Susan don't. wants to hear some camp stories of cooking on ranches. Well, I can remember it was about this time of year. Oh, somebody, sorry, before you get into that, the recipe is linked below for people. Yeah, the recipe is linked below down there to where you can find it. You can cook these anytime. Uh, uh, we appreciate it, every one of you tuning in. Uh, a ranch story that comes to mind, and I was making breakfast with on a ranch down to Abilene about this time of year, about 27, 8 years ago. And uh, I didn't have old Bertha there because I was having to move camp every day. I just dug me a hole, had a grate across it, was cooking there. And I was frying up a bunch of bacon that morning, done had the coffee on, it was about 3.30. And I looked up out there and I could see something in the dark coming my way. And I'm thinking, I have no idea what this is. And then the wind changed and I knew exactly what it was. It was an old mama skunk and six little ones about that tall. And they was headed straight up there like they was gonna go to drive up window. And uh, I hollered at her and I said, hold up there, mama. I said, you don't give me no trouble. I won't be giving you none. I do not need none of your seasoning on my bacon. And uh, her and them little ones turned off. They took off out there. But they did leave that odor lingering around breakfast. I remember one of them cowboys said, I think this is the first time that I ever had biscuits and eggs and gravy with a skunk smell on top of it. And I said, well, it all eats well, it does. But you never know what's going to happen out there. But uh, it's always been a good time. Uh, you know, times are hard out there a lot of times uh, because of the weather. But hey, we enjoy it every day. Any more questions? So, says, I feel like I just went to church. There you go. I, we are doing something. We did have a question from email. Do you have a favorite recipe after church to make? Oh, like growing up? well, I would probably say it is a chuck roast in the oven. Got all them taters and when? onions and carrots right after Sunday dinner, you know, because my mother would get us all rounded up for church and uh, she'd stick that thing in the oven, turn it down there where it's just right. We get back home when you open that door. Oh my gosh, things were smelling good. And we did a pot roast not long ago in a Dutch oven. If you hadn't seen that video, go back and check it out. But there is also uh, another, I think it's a, maybe an arm roast that we did in the uh, in a crock pot so many years ago. But me and Shannon will drink that crock pot, crock pot out every once in a while, stick a roast in there or pork butt to where we can be gone all day, come back and uh, I ain't gotta cook supper because folks, I'm gonna cook a breakfast every day, uh, but there's a lot of times after that, me and Shan might just have a smoothie or a salad because we get a lot of cooking in. Any oh, more why questions? Why don't you give them a heads up of what's coming up on Wednesday that I'm still editing. Ooh, folks, Wednesday coming up. You know, Shan got telling me, she said, what's my favorite food? And really she has three. Here it is, folks. Mine or yours? Yours. Oh. Burnt hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> pizza. Macaroni and cheese. I have the palate of like a third grader. So she said, we need to do a smoked mac and cheese video. And I said, well, I already got one in mind, and I'm telling you so much that I am going to dude it up, or it is probably going to be the best thing you ever got. Uh, you know that that I'm going to give y'all a little little hint here. It's triple smoked, is what I call it, because uh, oh, it is oh so good. I can't give you no more information than that. I've signed a contract with the Beagle, and he won't let me give you none of them foreclosures before it's a disclosure. Anybody else, Can Sugar? Can you um, freeze the egg bites? Can I raise the egg no, bites? No, freeze them. Freeze them. Yes, you can. Uh, a lot of times we'd keep these all in a Tupperware tub at the coffee shop and just slide them in the ice box. But you can let these come to room temperature. Like I say, it's best if you let them sit on a rack to where they get good and dried out. Wrap your paper towel around them, put them in a baggie, see if you can get most of the air out and they'll freeze. But when you thaw them out, don't throw them out in the microwave. Let them come to room temperature all on their own, and then you can nuclearize them things in there. But hey, these things will last forever, I think. Somebody wants the uh, burnt hot dog recipe. The burnt <laughs> hot dog recipe. Well, you know, when you got you got all of them out there on the grill, and folks, I am a Nathan's fan deluxe. I love them things. They are good. But I'll cook mine to where they, they got some good smoke to them, and they got some grill marks on them. But Shan will come out there and she said, burn them. And uh, so you just sort of like shut the lid, walk off, water the garden, mow the grass, come back. And uh, her and her mother are the same. They do love a burnt hot dog. And don't forget, if some of y'all just jumping on here now, be sure and check out that events page 
on our website because folks, we are so excited about this new cookbook coming out. And the tour is gonna begin there in the Windy City in Chicago at the Yeti store. And ooh, we'd be so glad to see everybody. We hope that we have great turnouts everywhere because folks, we'd love to see y'all. Anybody else, Shin? Um, just, do you still have stuff in there? No. I got stuff in there and it's oh, cooking. Oh, those new ones or yeah. the other ones? Yeah, they do. You want another bite? Uh, I'm bringing you one. No, no. Okay. Good. So, well. There's a lot of Canadians. Well, we, we thank y'all um, so much. As, so, and like also, I want to know, um, we're, so we're adding a Sunday video, right? We do have a Sunday video. And today this live come along at 2.30. Uh, we, we really want to know when would y'all think would be the best time to see a video on Sunday? We've thought about scooting it up to what, three or four? I think like four central. Four o'clock central time. Uh, everybody's usually in between morning church and evening church on Sunday. Uh, so if you want it then, uh, be sure and tell us. You can leave us a comment there. And don't remember, give us a thumbs up, like that video. Be sure and share it with all the friends and neighbors because Mr. Rogers said we need to be good neighbors. We do. And we have to say hello to Canada and the UK because we have a lot of... We... Uh, I always, I appreciate every fan in the world, I do, uh, and but I am amazed at the amount of people that we have that watch our videos from Canada, the UK, Germany, uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, uh, we're getting a lot of comments from Australia, we have a lot of fans down there too, and uh, all them places are on my bucket list one of these days, I'm just going to show up over there somewhere and uh, let somebody else cook my supper. Anybody else, sugar? Before we close this thing out. I mean, uh, we'll try to get to, we got lots of questions. Well, um, is it is it about time to close out, Sugar? I'm just asking you. I don't know how long we've even been. It's I didn't, 3.01. 3.01. We have been on 31 minutes. Anybody um, getting a bind with this recipe, like I say, it is linked down there below. It's easy to make. Get the kids in there in the kitchen with you and let them help. And you can have breakfast any time of day. Mage, I am so sorry that you didn't get an egg bite. Uh, but it's got onion in it, remember? So you can't be having none of that. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the second part of Cookies Cures too. And I want to thank y'all for all your comments that y'all put out there to me on that. There were some great tips, some great things. Had a fan comment, you know, hey Kent, if you'll zest that lemon that you're putting in there and drinking with that hot water every morning and add you a little ginger to it, ooh, it is so good for your liver and colon both. And uh, I appreciate all the comments because I I'm not a doctor, but I, I really think if you can get back to them natural remedies, things is pretty good shape they are. Thank Hillbilly said you should just do live shows and then you won't have to edit, which is a brilliant well, idea. Well, that is a good <laughs> idea. It was, but there's a lot of times where we're at, we ain't got no internet, you know, yeah. and uh, a lot of you might be too wondering, you know, how come we ain't cooking at the wagon? Folks, we're in a bad drought as I've ever seen. Uh, there is a burn ban on in our county and one spark up there where we're at now would burn down five, 6,000 acres. So. I'm not going to take that chance to cook up there until the good Lord blesses us with some rain. So don't give up on me. It's still up there. I love that old Studebaker, and uh, it's got me where I'm at today. So that and that beautiful woman over there. Anybody else, sugar? Um, no, nothing. I mean, they're coming in so fast that what? I'm trying to pick out the highlights. I'm trying to pick them out as quick. Well, and they're praying for rain. So. Pray for rain. That is a good thing. It is. It's uh. My daddy always said, you know, he's, we got some big old bluffs down there along the river and we was riding horseback one day going down through there looking for an old bull and there's some big old tall bluffs up there on the side. And uh, I was about 10 years old and I was looking up there. I said, was the water ever that tall? He said, ah, it might have been, but he said, probably not. He said, because when there was the great flood and Noah was out, he couldn't come by here because we just got a half inch. And that's usually about how dry it's been most of the time in southwest Oklahoma. But um, keep an eye on that website too. It won't be long before Shan will be posting uh, the dates of when we do our intimate evenings over there at Wellington. So you'll be wanting to keep an eye on that. But um, where is that cookbook? Folks, every picture in here was took by that beautiful lady over there. Every story was written by me. Um, there was a, a great editor over there that would have to edit a lot of my stuff. So 
We look so forward to this coming out March 28th. Uh, you know, when we talk about comfort food the cowboy way and all the old classics, I remember all them old greasy spoon cafes that we used to get to eat at sometimes. And hey, they were some best food I ever eaten in my life. And uh, I appreciate all them people back then in the 40s and 50s and early 60s. And I ain't old as the 40s, I promise you, in the early 50s. But uh, I still think that generation of people was probably the toughest generation ever born because they knew how to get by with whatever they had. Anybody else, Shin? Um, maybe last question. How old are the pups? How old are the pups? Well, we'll start with the old timer in the bunch and the one that uh, we have had the longest, and that is the big. I would say he's pretty close to 13 now. He has made many, many thousands of miles, been on lots of ranches he had. He is a, a great pup. He is. Next oldest would probably be the Major. Uh, we rescued him a little over two years ago. When we got him, he weighed about 10 pounds. The little, little heathen now weighs about 16 or 18, so he is doing good. But we'd say he's probably close to eight or nine years old. And then Duker, I don't know, maybe four at the most. And Sadie, I would say between three and four. So uh, they are doing good. And Cletus, y'all see him outside in videos every once in a while. I think Cletus is going to be about a maybe a year old here coming up pretty quick. Uh, he'll eat you. Pyrenees. He'll eat you out of house and home. But it comes that time, folks, and I hate to say it, but we're going to have to let you go. Uh, Y'all are family to us. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we uh, salute all our servicemen and women and all the veterans, and that flag is still flying right out there under the barn. It is. We appreciate each one of you for tuning in. God bless you, and I'll see you down the Easy Cackleberry Trail.